Hey guys, welcome again to another episode of When the Scriptures Become Real. It's again a podcast where we learn, where we study, where we grow, and where we try to become the best versions of ourselves if we can as we continue to serve our Lord. You can find the podcast on YouTube and also anywhere that you can get your podcast. And we're just so thankful that you guys are here and that you guys are with us today. Okay, so here's what we're going to talk about today. Um, I'm excited about this one. If my voice is a little scratchy, uh, I just came back from Bible camp. It was a great week, great week of study. Uh, great week of being with the kids there. It's just a great thing to be a part of. And I'm just so thankful that I, I can really have more uh, hands-on uh, work uh, with that with that camp. So I'm really thankful uh, to be more involved with it. And I'm just really grateful for that opportunity uh, to really help those kids and uh, help them to mold them uh, as Christ would want them to be molded through Scripture. So here's what we're talking about today. And our topic is this. Dear Lord, Thank you for making things hard for me. Dear Lord, thank you for making things hard for me. You know, I heard someone the other day, um, they mentioned about about um, growing. And as they, they talked about growing, they talked about how as you grow, you start to see things from a different perspective. And not just the good things that happened in your life, but also the tough and hard times and the times that really hurt. And um, as as they mentioned, as they talked about that type of growth, they mentioned this. As you grow older and as you learn to mature, they said, learn to find beauty in picking up the pieces. Learn to find beauty in picking up the pieces. So as, as I thought about that, sometimes when you think about what our Lord has done in your life and what the Lord has allowed to happen in your life, the thing that you'll you'll understand more as you study about our Lord is, yes, he is a God of love. Yes, he is a God of peace. Yes, he is a God of comfort. But God in his loving peace and his comfort nature, he wants what's absolutely best for you. And so to get you to that point that is absolutely best for you, what he might allow to happen might not feel the best. So our Lord allows certain things to happen in our lives. Why does he allow that? He allows those things to happen so that you can find a way to get closer to him. And so when you think about, you know, the, the things that you might be dealing with today or things that you might have been, de- that you might have been dealing with for a while now, you know, years, months, whatever you want to put there, sometimes doesn't it feel like the Lord doesn't care? Because he he doesn't take whatever away or he doesn't bring something or he doesn't do something to, in your mind, make it better. So if the Lord for the past couple of years, for the past couple of months, for the past couple of weeks, for the, however you want to put in that phrase. If the Lord hasn't helped you in the way that you want him to help, then what do we attribute to God? Well, he's mean. You know, he's, he doesn't love me or he doesn't care or he doesn't hear or, you know, why isn't he doing these things? See, you notice we have that type of thinking because that's how we start to pray. So when things happen in your life that you don't understand or when things happen that hurt or when affliction happens or financial strain or whatever you want to put there, notice your prayers start to change and your internal thoughts start to change. Now you start to think, Lord, why don't you care? Lord, why aren't you doing this? Lord, I'm alone. Lord, I'm the only one. Lord, it doesn't make sense. You see how your prayer starts to change and your way of thinking starts to change. But here's the thing about God is as you really consider with a mature set of eyes as you grow and mature and as I'm trying to do that as well, you're learning and I'm being taught that there's actually beauty in learning to pick up the pieces. But many times we don't think that's beautiful because it's not put together the way we want it to be put together. Life and things aren't happening the way that you dreamed it or the way that you thought it would happen or the way that you thought it would happen at this point. So because things haven't happened in that way, in that mode and fashion that you want to happen up to this point, then you feel like there can be no beauty in it. But there's actually beauty in learning to pick up the pieces. So thank you, Lord for making things hard for me. You know, when we think about Thanksgiving, you know, obviously we're commanded to pray Thanksgiving, you know, even in the prayer that Jesus prayed in the book of Matthew, right? 
right? He started the prayer with hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come. So he gave the Lord, the Lord thanksgiving. And even for us, what are we supposed to do? Pray without ceasing, right? We're supposed to have thanksgiving in our prayers. But when we think about thanksgiving, there's a connotation that we can only be thankful for the things that we think are good. So if something happens in my life or something happens in your life that you deem as very bad or hurtful, then we, I can't thank God for that. Where is that in scripture? Think about it. So now think about this for a second. So now here's what we're going to do. We're going to answer this question. Hopefully this can make this clear as we study this a little bit more today. Um, we're going to answer this question. Why does God allow hard times? Why does he allow hard times? And then why should I be thankful for that? Why? It doesn't make sense. So let, let's look at that. And maybe that can help you. Maybe that can help me as we study this together. So you might be in a state right now where you're going through it. Or you've been going through it. You know, you've been going through the ringer and you've been trying your best. But in trying your best, it feels like you're kind of, you ever feel like you're in this hamster wheel, right? And no matter how much you try to mature, how much you try to improve, how much you try to do what the Lord wants you to do, it almost feels like it kind of doesn't matter because you can get better spiritually. You can grow. You can do all these things. You can serve. You can worship. You can try to do all these things over and over and over, and you're doing the right things, but you see that your situation that you want to change, it's either getting worse or nothing's happening. So now you start to question, well, why am I doing all these things if the Lord's not going to help me? But then you look at what other people are doing and you look at the world and you're like, why is it seems like their situations are changing if they can do whatever they want to do? So then you start to get confused, right? I've been there. So now maybe that's you. This, this is for you. We're trying to help you out here. All right. So think about this. Why does God allow hard times? Number one, he, allowed hard, he allows hard times to test your faith. So think about it for us. <clears throat> You really don't understand what you've got, whether that's a thing, right, an item, or whether that's a person. You don't really understand what you have until that thing or that person's tested. So, you know, you think about, you know, uh, you know, if you're studying for the SATs and you've been studying for six months, but you never take the test, how do you know you know the material? You got to be tested first. You know, <laughs> you think about a car, right? Before you buy a car, what are you taking on? A test drive to know what you got. You know, you think about, you know, relationships that you're in, friendships that you're in. How do you know that that thing is good? How do you know that thing can have great potential? Because it's not just fun. It's tested. You go through very difficult times and you see how each party deals with it. So it, you have to be tested in order to see what you have. So think about God, think about things from his perspective. <clears throat> God is wise, God is all knowing, God is all powerful. God understands who we are, and he knows what we'll do. But why does God allow those things to happen? <clears throat> God allows testing because he wants you to know that you can get through it. And then two, that testing that he's putting you through, he knows that that thing that hurts real bad right now, he knows that that's going to lead you to a place that you can't see that's more beautiful than you ever could imagine. He knows that, <clears throat> but we can't see that, right? We can't see. So because we can't see it, then we attribute every bad thing, everything that hurts, everything that disappoints, everything that's hard, we attribute that to God not caring. When in all actuality, he does those things because he cares. So now think about this. So why does God allow hard times to test our faith? So look, look at this. Remember in Job chapter 1, so turn there, open up your Bibles or tablets, whatever you have. We're going to study that together, all right? So Job chapter 1. So as we look at this, understand what Job was and who he was. Job was, according to verses 1 through 5, Job was perfect. He eschewed evil. He feared God. He had seven sons and three daughters. He had cattle. He was the greatest man in all the east. He woke up early just to sacrifice for his kids just in case they sinned. That sounds like a great man, doesn't it? So why does a man like that, that's doing good, that's trying to do good, that loves God, loves people, loves everything about God, why is it that those type of people, why is it that they have to be tested? Isn't doing what God said enough? 
So how come God decides to take everything away from him? Why would God do that when, when Job already loves him? To test his faith. So how does God truly know if you love him? God has to test you. Well, that sounds so cruel. That sounds so mean. Why would a loving God do that? We do that to each other. So think about this. I read a book the other day, and it talked about uh, a husband and a wife. And the husband provided everything this woman ever wanted. You want a car? You got it. You want a house? You got it. You want more money to shop? You got it. You want this for the kids? You got it. You want a new car? You got it. Everything her heart could desire, everything she's ever wanted, he had the ability to provide it for her. Everything. But then the wife came home one day and she said, do you love me? He said, yes. She asked the question two more times. And by the third time, you can tell the, the guy was getting frustrated. So then she started to go into a little bit more detail. Then she started saying, well, if you love me, what color are my eyes? If you love me, what did I have on when we first met? If you love me, what was the song? What was the song that was playing when we were in the restaurant? If you love me, you know, where did this happen? Where did that happen? Right? So he couldn't answer those questions, but this is why he got mad. He got mad because I'm providing everything. So guess what that's showing? That's showing that I care, but in her mind, that's great. But was it enough? She was testing him. So if we do that to each other and we say, that's okay. How can we say God's evil when he does it to us? You see how messed up and how faulty our thinking is? So now God is doing this and God is potentially doing what he's doing to you right now and allowing certain things to happen in your life to test you to see where you're at. Because what do we say to God? Remember, we confessed that Jesus is Lord and that we would give our lives over to him. Acts chapter 8. So if we confess that we love him, that we care about him, that we love his church, that we love his son, what's the Lord going to do to that love? He's got to test it. So how do you know if love is real? You don't know love is real because it's fun or that it feels good. You know that love is real when it's tested. So the thing that the Lord is putting us through and that he allows, he's allowing it to happen to test our love towards him. Because how do we know that? Because notice what verse 8 says in the text in Job chapter 1. And the Lord said unto Satan, Hast thou considered my servant Job? There is none like him on the earth. He is perfect. He's upright. He fears God. And he eschews evil. So when you think about it, what did God have towards Job? Trust. So think about your trials and your afflictions and your hurts and your disappointments. Think about those things from this perspective. Could it be possible that God is allowing those things to happen in your life because he trusts you that you'll get through it? But now let me ask you this follow-up question. Are you proving the Lord right right now? Are you being good on your promise that God can trust you. You know, a lot of times when these things happen in our lives, when these hurts and these disappointments and these afflictions and these trials happen, we try to overcome them to prove a point to ourselves. And we also try to overcome them to prove to other people that hurt us that we can overcome it. But when you really think about it from that perspective, as you, as you mature and grow a little bit, you really start to see how stupid and childish that is. I'm doing this for the past five, six, seven years to prove to this person or that person that I can do it with or without. That's childish. It's dumb when you really think about that. So why should, what perspective should I have when you go through certain trials? It's not to prove yourself right and it's not to prove to others, others wrong. Maybe we should look at things from this perspective. I don't want to let God down. So now think about it. When these things happen in your life, the Lord is allowing this, but I'm not going to let him down. What does Psalm chapter one say? 
that we shall be like a tree, that he shall be like a tree, planted by the rivers of water. I shall not be moved. So now the Lord allows things to happen in your life to, number one, test your faith. But then you think about this as well. Underneath that, the Lord also allows things to happen in your life to refine your faith. So notice, what, remember what Peter said, that the trial of your faith, it's more precious than gold. Think about what Job even said, right, in Job 13, right, verse 15, right, though he slay me, right, I will trust in him. So now when, when you think about, and didn't he say he will come forth as gold after he's tried? So now here's the thing about our God. Sometimes we think God is cruel because he allows good people to get hurt. Good people that love him to get hurt. So then we lose our faith in God because you may have been like Job the past couple years. You may have been good in doing all these things, verses 1 through 5. But then out of nowhere, God smacks you with something that really, really hurts. So now, as he, as he hits you with those things that really, really hurt, then guess what? We attribute to God. You don't care. But when you think about it, God will allow whatever he deems necessary in your life to test your faith. And who are we to say that that's cruel? Because God is love. That's his nature, right? First John. So if that's his nature, then guess what I have to have? And guess what you have to have when you've been going through certain, certain things of hurt, disappointment, pain, strain, anything you want to put in that blank. It takes a certain level of trust to be a servant of God. Because God, I don't know what you're doing. It hurts. It doesn't make sense. I don't see how this is making me better. I don't see how this can help people. I don't see how going through this can glorify God. I don't really understand it right now. But while we do those things, maybe we are letting God just let them work. Just let them work. So here's the thing about us. So with God, maybe he's allowing hard things to happen to test your faith. But then number two, as we look at this a little bit more, why does God allow hard things to happen? And how can I thank him for that? Thank you, Lord, for allowing these good things to happen. Thank you for allowing hard things to happen to me. Why would I say that? Because God could be preparing you for something greater. So now think about this too. Everything God does is pointed and is precise. And so God never does anything just for the sake of saying that he did it. God always does every single thing for a specific reason. So think about the 10 plagues. God allowed those 10 plagues to happen because each plague was representative of a certain Egyptian God. Because he was still trying to prove to the Egyptians and even to his own people, I am that I am. It's pointed. Everything is pointed. You know, you think about what he did to Joseph, allowing him to be accused, allowing him to be thrown away, allowing him to be forgotten, allowing him to be thrown into prison, allowing him to go through all those things. Every single aspect in every iota and every second of Joseph's life was pointed and precise so that he could be second in command. God never does anything just for the sake of doing it. So what he's allowing for your life right now, could it be possible that God is allowing this pain, this hurt, that these health problems, all these things that you're dealing with? Could it be possible that he's trying to prepare you for something that's greater? But you need to go through this right now to get to that point. You know, and that's why I love Genesis 50, 20 so much. You know, it's because he mentioned you meant this for evil. Your intentions were evil. And your intentions were only evil towards me. You didn't have any good ones. But God used your intentions that were evil towards me for good. That's how good our God is, guys. Our God is so good. Our God is so just. Our God is so loving. Our God is so comforting that even when other people are doing evil things and saying evil things and doing evil things towards you, he will use that for your good. 
If that's not good, I don't know what is. I don't know what is. That's amazing. So maybe God is doing what he's doing and he's allowing certain things to go down because he's trying to prepare you to be in a better spot. But he needs you to trust him that he knows that there's a better spot. You know, I think about these men of faith a lot. Abram, Joseph, Job. The thing about it is we can read the end of the story or the account. But if you put yourself and you immerse yourself in scripture and you immerse yourself in Genesis 12, you immerse yourself in Job 1, you immerse yourself in in Genesis 37 and on to chapter 50, you immerse yourself in that account, you don't know the end of the story. You don't know that you're going to be the father of many nations. You don't know if you're if you're going to have a son because you're waiting forever. You don't know that you're going to be second in command. You don't know that you're going to get double after losing everything like Job. So how do I get how do I get through that? Faith. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, but the evidence of things not seen. You know the thing about our God is this mountain that he's trying to make you overcome right now. The hurt, the experiences, the pain, the the trial, the heartache, everything that you're dealing with to try to get and climb over this mountain. The Lord has another one that he wants you to climb, but he needs you to have the experiences and the wisdom and the compassion and the love that you got from this one so that you can climb that one. So now think about this. I, I was thinking about this the other day. Why does God allow these things and this pain to happen? And think about this with me for a second, all right? This is it's mind-blowing. Why does God allow heartbreak and disappointment and health problems and death and pain and betrayal and hurt and all these things that Jesus went through in his life? Why does he allow good men that love him and good women that love him to go through that? Why would he why would he intentionally allow that to happen to people that love him. Why would he do that? It it doesn't make sense. I think God allows those things to happen in our lives because I think those things that happen are a reminder of how hard it is to be him. So think about what God is. God is love. Do you really know what love is until you're hated? So now you understand how hard it is to love when you're not loved. Guess what? God is saying, my son, my daughter, that's what it's like to be me. How do you really know how to show compassion to somebody unless you're not shown that compassion? My son, my daughter, that's what it's like to be me. I think these trials are reminders to his followers to keep your heart soft. Keep your heart soft. Because in order to have a heart like me, Matthew chapter 5, verses 3 through 9, guess what it takes? It takes humility. It takes mourning. It takes hungering and thirsting after righteousness. It takes being merciful. It takes being a peacemaker. It takes being all of those things in Matthew chapter 5. To be me. And so now those tests happen. And I think God is testing good people for us to really see where my heart is at. So can I show compassion when compassion was not shown to me? Can I show love to people when hate was given to me? Can I love my enemies? You know, can I do those things? So now as we think about God, maybe God is trying to prepare your heart through that, through those hard, difficult times. Maybe he's cultivating your heart to be more like his son. But in order for that heart to be cultivated, how can I really have the heart of Jesus and the heart of my God? How can I have that? If God never puts me in situations that I have to use it. 
So now, think about Joseph. Joseph was thrown away. Literally. Joseph was kicked to the curb. Joseph's brothers wanted to kill him. They had bad intentions toward him. You know, Joseph was forgotten about in jail. Joseph went through all those things, but what did Joseph gain? He gained the heart of compassion. He gained the heart of mercy. He gained the heart of love. He gained the heart of mourning. He gained the heart of a peacemaker. He gained the heart of hungering and thirsting after righteousness. He gained pureness in heart, even when other people had evil intentions toward him. So after Joseph gained all of those things in Matthew 5, verse 3 through 9, then guess what he was ready for? He was ready to lead for God. So maybe God is allowing these things to happen to you because he knows in the future he's got a spot for you to do things for his glory. But in order for you to truly maximize that spot, you have to have his heart. And in order to have his heart, you got to go through pain. It changes it, doesn't it? It really does, y'all. It changes it. Then here's number three as we study this. Why does God allow hard things to happen? To test your faith, to prepare for something greater. But then number three, maybe he's allowing these hard things to happen to you so that you can go help somebody else. You know, I think about Luke chapter 22. Luke chapter 22, verse 32, where Jesus mentions to Peter, but I have prayed for thee that your faith doesn't fail. And after you're converted, you go strengthen your brethren. Maybe there's somebody out there, and I'll just use myself as an example, but use yourself. Maybe there's another Jordan out there that needs my help that's going to go through similar situations. So maybe God needs you to get through what you're going through so that you can go help and strengthen somebody else. That's another part about God that's so beautiful is that God will allow brethren to go through trial, heartbreak, hurt, loss of loved ones, pain, health issues, trial, all these things, and he will allow those things, if good brethren make it through, he will allow those things to strengthen their heart to such a beautiful level that after they're truly converted after that trial, that they're going to help somebody else get through it too. So could it be possible that the Lord is having you go through something right now so that you can go help guide somebody else? But how can you guide if you quit? How can I guide if I quit? There's no way. And sometimes what we can do, guys, is with our trials, we can look at trials and pain and heartbreak and disappointment. We can look at it from a selfish point of view. Why is this happening to me? Why did this go for me? Why did this, why did this happen that way for me? But rather, as you look at things from a faith mindset and a mature mindset, Hebrews 1, Luke chapter 22, Job chapter 1, if you look at things from a more mature mindset, then you'll start to look at things, how can this help me gain the heart of Christ? How can this help me to be better? And how can this help me now so that I can help somebody else? You know, as we close and as I think about this, this was actually a prayer of mine at camp this year. And for me, camp is that time in July where I kind of reset. So basically anything that happened from that previous December to that next July, it's kind of a start over point for me. Not saying that I forget those things and that I don't take those lessons, but it's kind of a reset point for me. And as I was sitting praying under the stars that day, you know, one thing that I'm continuing to be taught is thanksgiving, but not thanksgiving just for the good times, but be thankful for those hard times that got you to where you are. So how do you become wise? 
you become wise because at one point, what were you? What was I? A fool. How do you become strong and how do you know what true strength is? Because you know what it feels like to be weak. So now, as I'm sitting and as I'm praying, thank you, Lord, for the hard times. Because those hard times, those difficult times, the times where I wanted to quit, the times where it looked dark, the times where nothing made sense, the times where I questioned everything, the times where I just didn't want to go another day anymore, and I was tired, and I didn't want to I don't want to, uh, you know, continue to live this type of life for you. Those days and those hurts and those disappointments. Without those. I couldn't help the people that I'm helping now. Without those, I couldn't be where I'm at now. Without those, I don't have the I don't have the knowledge that I need to help people that need it. So maybe for you, maybe for me, maybe this whole time, instead of hurting you like you thought he was, maybe this whole time, God was trying to transform and mold your heart so that not only you can be better for you, but you can be better for someone else. You know, Job said, the Lord gives and the Lord takes away. But whether recently the Lord has been giving to you lately, or whether recently the Lord has been taking away from you recently, how does Job end that phrase in that verse? But blessed be his name. So for you, as we grow together, the Lord may be giving you things right now, and if he is, I rejoice with you. I'm happy for you that certain things are happening for you, and that's great. But if if the Lord is taking things away from you too, and he's allowing hurt and allowing all these things to happen to you, his name is still blessed, and he is still blessed. Our God is good, guys. Our God is good, and the, the, the more you get to know him, the more you study about him, and the more you get closer to him on your own, the sweeter he gets, no matter how hard things get, no matter how hard things hurt, he gets sweeter every time. Every time, man, he gets sweeter. But don't miss out on that because you're looking too inward on the affliction. Learn the beauty in picking up the pieces. Dear Lord, thank you for making things hard for me. I hope that I was able to encourage you as it's encouraged me um, as I studied this. I mean, this is just something that I want to do better and be more thankful for for all times, not just when things worked out, but to be thankful for the difficult times and uh, because that's leading the Lord's leading us somewhere. So hopefully that can encourage you. Very thankful that I'm here. So be looking out. I'm going to have pictures out of the potential studio of the new studio, actually. So I'm really excited about that. The Lord is doing some great things for us and. I'm really thankful for this opportunity, and I try to relish every moment and take advantage of every moment. So we're thankful for this. So Lord willing, we will see you next week, if not this week. Thank you guys so much, and we'll see you then. Thanks, guys.